about a year and a half ago, my husband and I found out that we were pregnant. <laughs> it was both a delight and a joy and honestly a surprise because she was not planned. And at the time we were living in our one bedroom apartment, which we are still currently living in. And all of our space was accounted for. I mean everything, storage space, under the bed space, closet space, every type of space you can possibly think about. It was being used and it was primarily being used by me. So while I was thrilled at the prospect of having our daughter and bringing her into this world, I was also extremely panicked because I did not know how we were going to possibly make enough space for her in our apartment. And my daughter is currently pulling out my hair, so it's kind of painful and I cannot do that. In my desperation of trying to figure out what was the best option for us and how we could possibly make enough space for another human, I ventured out and picked up the life-changing magic of Tidying Up by Marie Kondori. I don't know if I'm saying that right. I'm sorry if I butchered her name. So the question you're supposed to um, ask yourself as you begin your declaring process is, does this bring me joy? And as I embarked in this journey of decluttering and nesting and making space for our baby girl, I found the life-changing magic of tidying up instrumental to what I was wanting to do and ultimately it allowed us to stay in our one bedroom apartment. If you're interested in hearing what it is that I learned, then keep watching. So the first thing that I learned was contentment and really what that means is practicing contentment practicing gratitude. I have this compulsion where I just have to always go out and buy things. I mean, you go to Target, you go for one thing, you come out with like 20. Yeah, I'm that person. And so I knew that if I wanted to become more of a minimalist and venture into the minimalist lifestyle that I would need to learn how to practice gratitude for the things that I already had. Once you practice gratitude and you really begin to understand what it is that you already have, what it is that you're grateful for, that desire to always buy things and consume things really kind of dissipates. So the second thing that was extremely transformational and extremely helpful in my minimalist journey was being creative. So for me, in a really practical sense, that looked like looking at what we already have and utilizing what we already owned. So when I knew we were having a baby girl, I knew that I wanted a changing table for her, but I also knew I did not want to spend the money on purchasing another piece of furniture for a one bedroom apartment where we barely had any space anyways. So I looked at what we already owned and saw our council table. Our council table was being used for primarily decorative reasons. When the thought came to my mind of, I could actually change this into a more functional piece of furniture and actually change it into a changing table, I was extremely pleased because it meant I did not have to spend any more money and that I could utilize what we already owned. So the third thing that was extremely helpful, and this is actually talked about in The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up, is relinquishing guilt. Now I know that we've all been given things that we don't necessarily enjoy and maybe it's not our style, maybe we just don't gravitate towards it, but you hold on to it because you feel guilty. Let me just say, relinquish the guilt. Do yourself a favor, do everyone a favor, and just let it go. It's okay if somebody gave it to you and you don't really like it. What has been so helpful in me learning how to relinquish guilt is my lesson learned number four, and that is, by letting go, you bless others. What's that old saying, like, one man's trash is another man's treasure? What you may not find joy giving to you, somebody else may really, really, really love. So consider giving the gift to somebody else, consider donating it, consider doing anything and everything but keeping it if it's not bringing you joy. While I was asking myself, does it bring me joy and I was getting rid of things that didn't and keeping things that did, I also found that sometimes does it bring me joy didn't really encapsulate what I was filling. And so an example of this was our toolkit. I don't really have any feelings towards our toolkit. I knew that it was practical and I knew that we needed it. So aside from just asking yourself the question, does it bring me joy, I also learned to ask yourself the question of do I need this and do I really utilize it? If it's yes, if it's practical, if it's meant to be in your home, it's, if it's helpful, then yes, you definitely do want to keep it. This has got to be the biggest one, the biggest hurdle that I had to get over and I know other people need to get over too, and that is get rid of your doomsday thinking. 
So doomsday thinking is asking the question, but what if someday I may need it? And really, that someday is never ever going to come. Someday, one day, maybe someday. No, it's not gonna happen. Doomsday thinking just really enforces kind of this um, fear mindset because you fear that you're going to be without the one thing that you may need one time. I actually lived out of a backpack for a year. I packed enough clothing for 10 days and some toiletry products and that was it. And I realized how much I could do without. Yes, there were days that it was uncomfortable. Yes, it was hard at times, but I really didn't need everything that I thought I needed. I think that doomsday thinking is not going to propel you towards a more minimalist lifestyle. I had to learn that the hard way by literally leaving everything that was comforting behind and just living off the bare essentials. So the next lesson I learned is that I'm actually a lot happier with less things. I always felt like I needed more and more and more things to make me happy, but really with the less that I have, the more happy that I am. I guess maybe it's just that I don't have to manage so much. I don't have like so much waste everywhere. I don't feel like I'm spending as much money and I can actually spend it on experiences and things that I'd rather do. I don't know, just having less has been very, very instrumental in just increasing my joy and my happiness. And I genuinely mean this, like genuinely mean this. And the last lesson that I personally learned is that decluttering is an ongoing process. It's mainly because I'm finding that I can live with less and less and as I find that out I get rid of things and I primarily either give them to friends and family or I mostly donate the items I no longer need. Those are my life lessons. I hope that was helpful for you. I hope this might encourage you to maybe pick up the life-changing magic of tidying up or to start your own decluttering process today. And I just really appreciate you guys watching my channel. Please subscribe and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed the content and if you're interested in my channel. My channel is geared towards green beauty, a little bit of minimalism and DIY sprinkled out, and just all natural living. So yeah, thank you so much once again, and I will catch you next week. I drop a new video every Sunday, so I'll see you then. Bye!